What's going on guys? Travis from americantrucks.com and today we're looking at how to make our 2011 plus EcoBoost powered F-150 sound a little bit louder and prouder using a catback like this one. This is the AFE Atlas 4 inch single exhaust system. Comes in the factory side exit configuration and this particular option features a really nice black powder coat exhaust tip. This is a five inch tip so it's definitely gonna be in your face. It's really nice because it's slash cut and it's rolled as well with stainless steel underneath. So it's gonna look good for years to come. Four inches in diameter is pretty much the biggest you can go as far as catbacks are concerned for the EcoBoost truck. And that's a good thing because with the AFE system and with really any system in general, the bigger you go in terms of diameter for the tubing, the deeper it's gonna sound and generally speaking, the louder it's gonna sound. And that's a good thing, especially on this truck because the EcoBoost motor does sound good by itself. And then you got those turbos as well making all that noise but that factory setup with that big muffler especially with that resonator on there really doesn't allow any of that noise to exit the pipes this is really going to open things up as far as volume is concerned i'm going to go ahead and give this thing a healthy three out of five on my loudness meter and one of the things that really stood out to me with this system compared to some of the other ones that i've heard again with that four inch diameter is you really do hear a lot of the feedback from the turbos you can really hear them spooling under there they got a nice loud whistle to them you can even hear some back pressure pops and things like that when you're decelerating. It sounds really cool. The other thing that's nice about this is there are a couple of four inch options available on the site if you do your research, but this is gonna be the most affordable one. This one actually comes in at around the $450 price point, which also makes it one of the least expensive catbacks in general. So if you're really trying to pinch some pennies here, but you still wanna make your motor sound good, then the AFE option is gonna be a good choice on cost alone. Now, why is it so affordable? Well, it is made out of aluminized steel for the tubing and for the muffler. Again, the exhaust tip is 304 stainless with black powder coat. And even through this nice little logo on here, it looks like it's brushed aluminum. So the system's gonna look good where it counts. Underneath the truck though, the tubing might show a few signs of rust and corrosion a little bit quicker than a factory setup, which you can see behind me, our factory system is made out of 409 stainless steel. And even though it is stainless, it still does develop that rust on top. So pretty much you're gonna have to deal with that one way or the other. So you're saving a little bit of cash here by going with that aluminized steel option. Now, as far as the install is concerned, in order to keep things affordable, they do throw in a universal extension pipe. So depending on your cabin bed length, you might have to make one cut to that provided extension pipe with something like a Saza or some other cutting implement. Um, so that's one of the other reasons why this is very affordable. Now, as far as actually getting this thing bolted on goes, yes, it is pretty big tubing. Four inches in diameter is almost twice as big as some of the factory tubing. So it's gonna be a little bit of a squeeze under there. But if you're worried about the install, don't worry too much. I'm actually gonna walk you guys through that. So again, if you're looking for one of the widest and one of the most affordable catbacks that you can throw on your EcoBoost motor, you wanna get all that good juicy turbo noise, you want it to sound nice and deep and throaty, then the AFE Atlas is gonna be a good option. If you decide to stick with this one, come back in a little bit. I'll show you all the tools you need and then we'll get started on that install. Okay, to install your Atlas system, you may need to actually cut the extension pipe, like I said, in which case you'll need a cutting implement with a measuring tape and you definitely want some eye protection to do so. You'll also need a standard drive ratchet as well as a 10 and 13 millimeter shallow socket and you'll need a 15 and a 9 16 deep socket. It's very helpful to have an extension in an impact swivel socket if you're using an impact gun and I would strongly recommend having something like a dead blow mallet or a conventional hammer as well as a pry bar and some spray lubricant to help get your factory exhaust system loosened up for removal. All right guys, so first thing we need to do is grab our 13 mil socket and we're gonna pull these two bolts here. This is the flange that secures our cap back to our white pipe. Ah! Ah! 
Okay, now we have to start disconnecting our exhaust system from all of the hangers. There's four in total. You have two right here in front of the muffler, and then you have two out back. Uh, the two out back are gonna stay bolted to the frame rails, but it's easier to just unbolt these. You'll need a 10 mil socket for these. Okay, now we have those two remaining hangers, like I said. This is the uh, rearmost one on the tailpipe next to the spare tire. So we're gonna have to slip the hanger out of the rubber isolator. And in order to do that and make it a lot easier on ourselves, we're gonna actually lube this up with some spray lubricant because you probably have some corrosion on the metal hanger and that can actually grab the uh, rubber isolator, it can actually tear it. So you really wanna make sure you kinda get this nice and lubed up. Then we're gonna spray the other one on the tailpipe, then I'm gonna show you guys how to slide the entire system out as one piece. Okay, so we've got those isolators sprayed up really well. We got them as loose as we can. Now we're gonna actually slide the entire cap back towards the bumper in order to get the hangers to fall out of those rubber isolators. This is a pretty heavy system, guys, so you definitely wanna have some muscle. Have a friend helping you if possible. And if you're also doing this in the air with a lift like us, it's a very good idea to make sure you have some pole jacks underneath here, make sure the truck's nice and stable. Don't want this thing falling down on you because you might have to use a little bit of leverage. It's also helpful to have a pry bar so you can kinda of get some leverage on the muffler itself to try and get it unseated. But at any rate, once you get the hangers to fall out of the isolators, it's just a matter of letting the tailpipe rest on the axle right here. Got to make sure you get your mid pipe over that cross member by the Y pipe. That should duck down underneath the truck and we can pull the entire system out as one piece. All right guys, now that we have the factory system removed, you wanna mock up the new AFE system. That way you can determine if you have to use the extension pipe provided in the kit. Again, that depends on your cab and bed length. Just go ahead and reference the instructions. And it's also a good idea to do so. That way you can make sure all these slip fit connections for all your tubes are gonna be nice and open so you can get the pipes to fit together. Don't wanna run into any issues when you're doing the actual install. But I also wanted to throw these next to each other just so you guys can see how crazy the AFE system is compared to the factory setup. Our factory tubes measure two and a half inches on our mid pipe here, and then coming out of the muffler, those measure about three inches. AFE system's loud and proud, guys. This is four inches in diameter on the mid pipe, as well as for the muffler and then for the tail pipe itself. We're also deleting the resonator on the mid pipe. That's really cool because on these turbo vehicles, this resonator is actually largely responsible for keeping those turbos quiet. So you'll definitely hear them spooling up with the new mid pipe, and you'll probably hear some of that nice back pressure and some of that uh, blow buyer while you're driving around. So that's cool, you're gonna hear a lot more turbo noise. Um, working back to the AFE muffler here, obviously it goes without saying, this thing's super tiny. It's a lot smaller than the factory muffler. Factory muffler is baffled and chambered. Again, no good for sound or volume. The new AFE muffler, this is pretty much a straight through muffler, kind of shotgun style. It has one primary flow tube that's perforated, and then the casing of the muffler acts as one giant chamber. It's a very simple setup, very free flowing. Again, you're gonna hear a ton of exhaust, noises and you're also going to hear all that good turbo noise as well. And then coming out of the business end here on the back, AFE was nice enough to throw in a really crazy black powder coat tip. That's slash cut and rolled and it has a black powder coat finish on it. And then they even threw on that nice little uh, riveted AFE logo. So overall, aesthetically, this looks a lot nicer than the factory system. Um, as far as the install goes, AFE did a good job with the hangers as well. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. So we're using all of our hanger locations. And then we're also using these saddle clamp hanger combos. This can actually make the install a little bit easier because you can kind of hang up each piece one at a time. That's nice if you're doing this by yourself. So go ahead and reference the instructions. If you do need to make a cut to the provided extension pipe in the middle, go ahead and do so now. Make sure you're wearing some iPro to be safe. Once you've made that cut, or if you have to skip that cut, go ahead and grab your mid pipe. We're gonna be reusing the factory bolts for the flange on the Y pipe, so you'll need that 13 mil socket. So go ahead and grab this guy and meet me underneath the truck. Okay, so when we go to throw the mid pipe up here, you wanna make sure that the mid pipe angles straight down. It has a little bend in the tube. And you're gonna have a, around a 45 degree angle here, maybe a 60 degree angle for the uh, flange itself. And again, we're reusing these bolts here. Now, we are not gonna tighten these down completely. We're gonna keep a little bit of play in the mid pipe. That's gonna help with getting a fitment right for the muffler and the tailpipe as well. So we're just gonna tighten these down a little bit here. 
but we're going to keep it loose. And I also have a pole jack supporting this to help keep it level while I tighten this down. If you don't have a pole jack, definitely have a friend to help you if possible. All right, now the mid pipe's in place, we're gonna slide our muffler on. You want the logo of the muffler facing towards the outside of the truck. And I'm also using this three inch band clamp in order to secure the muffler to the mid pipe. Um, the instructions tell you that you're supposed to use one of the uh, clamps with the hangers on here, and you're supposed to secure that hanger to one of the factory rubber isolators. I actually did a little bit of test fitting with that, and unfortunately with the length of the hanger and the factory isolator, it doesn't really get the correct angle for the mid pipe and the muffler in order for the tailpipe to line up. Um, it's not a huge concern. You actually technically don't need any hangers right here. Uh, many other trucks actually only use a hanger behind the tailpipe and the muffler, and the only reason that the F-150 comes with a hanger right here is because of that flex fitting on the factory muffler that has some play in it and that needs to be uh, rigid. But since we're using straight pipes here, we don't have to worry about that. So if you guys run into fitment issues with the isolator and the hanger right here, and you don't want to spend a bunch of time on that, you can skip that. You can just use this regular band clamp. Now, because the muffler doesn't change orientation, we're going to go ahead and we're also going to tighten this band clamp down so we can secure the muffler to the mid pipe, then we can throw the tailpipe on. Uh, in order to tighten down this clamp, you're going to need a 15 millimeter socket. All right guys, so I went ahead and I threw the tailpipe in place because that's our next step here. However, um, depending on your wheelbase, you might actually run into a little bit of a problem here. We're working with a 145 inch wheelbase. So AFE tells us not to use the provided extension pipe that I mentioned earlier, but we run into a little bit of a problem here. Our muffler is supported correctly and our mid pipe is installed correctly. But you can see here that our clamp and hanger combo is not actually reaching the rubber isolator on the frame here. So there's a slight issue going on here maybe with the length of the pipe. So I'm just gonna measure out here how much further we have to go. And we're probably looking at adding about five inches of length to our system. So I'm gonna actually use that extension pipe here. I'm gonna measure out the extension pipe and I'm actually gonna secure it to the other side of the muffler in order to push our entire system back. That way we can get the tailpipe in place with both of our hangers and our clamps. So again, let's go ahead and grab that extension pipe and we'll get that cut down to five inches. Okay, so I went ahead and I cut up that extension pipe to get the five inches that we need in order to correct this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove our muffler and slide that extension pipe in place. All right, now here's the extension that we cut down to five inches. Again, this is for the 145 inch wheelbase if you run into problems with the hangers not uh, reaching the isolators. It's gonna use the same band clamp, uh, four inches with the same 15 mil socket. Okay, now that our extension's in place, we can throw our muffler back in place, get him tightened back down, and we should be good to go to get our tailpipe on. All right guys, now that we have our uh, pipes corrected as far as length goes, now we can throw the tailpipe into place. But there is a slight issue here. Trying to get the tailpipe to slide into the muffler and get the hanger inside this rear isolator is a little bit difficult. It's gonna take time. It might actually be kind of impossible, to be honest. We're gonna make it a lot easier though. If you got that 10 mil handy, go ahead and remove this isolator and we're actually just gonna slide it onto the hanger of the tailpipe itself. Then we're gonna slide the tailpipe onto the muffler and then we can actually just bolt the hanger back up in place with it already installed. It is a lot easier. Okay, now that we have that removed, let's go ahead and throw it on the tailpipe here. Just spray this down a little bit so that the rubber doesn't grab too much. You can see how much effort it takes to slip this on here. That's just with the tailpipe on the ground. It's a lot more difficult when it's on the vehicle. Okay, now we can finally throw our tailpipe in place. Just slip it into the muffler, make sure it's pushed back all the way. Then once you got that seated, go ahead and line up the hanger that we removed, or the isolator rather. And we're gonna get our bolts back in place, then we'll drive those home using our 10 mil socket. All right, now we're gonna throw on our exhaust tip. So pretty much just line it up 
Might be a little bit of a squeeze, so you just wanna kinda of wiggle it in place. Once you have it in place, go ahead and grab your 15 mil socket and go ahead and tighten it down. All right guys, now that everything's in place, I actually put a pole jack underneath the end of the tailpipe there. That kind of corrected the angle a little bit so it's not rubbing against the heat shield. Now we're gonna start tightening down some of the clamps that we have not yet. Um, the hanger and clamp combos, for some reason, we're switching over to 9 16 so from metric to SAE, really not sure why, but you'll need a 9 16 deep socket for this. All right, so now that everything's all sized up, now we can tighten down the flange here, securing the wide pipe to the cap back. Again, you'll need a 13 millimeter socket for this. All right, so once you got the tip bolted down, you've double checked your clearance with all your tubing, make sure nothing's rattling. Then you got that flange tightened down. Now you can turn the truck over, make sure you don't have any exhaust leaks. That should wrap up this install. You can enjoy all that good turbo noise. That'll also wrap up my review of the AFE Atlas 4-inch single exhaust system in the factory side exit configuration, featuring this really nice black powder coat tip. I'm Travis, thanks for watching, and for all things F-150, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.